2001, the White House was just being cleared. It wasn't an orderly evacuation. No one knew how many planes were still in the sky. We were armed with some automatic weapons, shotguns, our sidearms. Uh, but how would you stop a plane? Now, the defenses have been updated. Anti-aircraft missiles are almost certainly mounted around the White House. After 9-11 with a hijacked uh, large jets full of fuel, the, the threat of that coming to the White House is one that's a very difficult to defend against. And quite frankly, uh, the, the primary defense about against that type of threat goes back to the airport. Airport security is now directly linked to protecting the president, and the newest screening uses three-dimensional technology based on medical CAT scans to detect explosives and weapons in baggage. So we're going to take a lump of a plastic explosive. We're going to put it inside this radio, packing it as it would be in a regular bag. A gantry spinning at 120 revolutions per minute uses multiple x-rays to record thousands of, of a suitcase from every angle. A computer program processes the data instantly to determine the density of every item. As unique as a fingerprint, the density instantly tells the machine whether an object is harmless toothpaste or a deadly bomb. But after all the dollars spent on advanced technology, the greatest danger is the simplest and hardest to prevent. The Lone Gunman. The specter of assassination has been etched in the American psyche since the death of Abraham Lincoln in public at Ford's Theater. Even in a fast-changing world a century and a half later, some of the dangers are familiar. A lone gunman who's not part of an organization, very hard to detect. If he's determined to really get after the president, there are, that's, that's the most difficult thing for the Secret Service, because it could be anyone. On September 5th, 1975, Lynette Squeaky Frome, a devotee of cult leader Charles Manson, slipped into the crowd around President Gerald Ford in Sacramento, California. She pulled the trigger of a 45, but the chamber was empty. She was squeezing the trigger on a loaded chamber when Agent Larry Boondorf got to her. He reacted courageously and, and grabbed the gun, but just luckily his thumb stopped the hammer. I mean, that's just luck. 16 days later, Sarah Jane Moore was interviewed by the Secret Service as a potential threat. They concluded she was harmless. The next day, Moore fired a shot from a revolver at President Ford in San Francisco. And you watch the agents uh, around Ford getting him into the car, just like the Reagan assassination. You know, boom in the car and get him out of there. Both Sarah Jane Moore and Squeaky Frome are now out of prison and under careful Secret Service supervision. But the memory of Lee Harvey Oswald, the lone sniper who killed President Kennedy, still haunts the agency. Now, the Secret Service has counter snipers to protect the president against a distant gunman. But as new and better rifles enter the market, their range has to keep getting longer and longer. It's a magazine-fed bolt-action 308 caliber rifle. Effective range is about 800 to 1,000 meters. According to news accounts, in 2002, a Canadian sniper fired at a Taliban fighter in Afghanistan at 2,430 meters over one and a half miles. The bullet was in the air for an estimated four seconds and was deadly accurate. The things that affect the bullet are primarily gravity and resistance from atmospheric conditions such as wind or humidity in the air. Because of that, you have to compensate and the way we compensate is by adjusting the scopes. We're down here in front of the backstop at our steel targets that we were shooting at. Uh, if you look back up the road up there, uh, back just to the left of the far telephone pole is our shooting position. Uh, it's approximately five football fields from here to there, so 500 yards. Uh, it's a pretty long shot. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. President. 
I think every president of the United States, when he swears into office on the 20th of January, recognizes that he's a target to a range of threats that are out there and that he will always be vulnerable. And the worry is never higher than when the president steps off Air Force One onto foreign soil. Danger is everywhere, but overseas, the agency does not have absolute control, and the president is at his most vulnerable. The reality is that once we leave the shores of the United States, the Secret Service has no jurisdiction, we have no authority. Uh, we really have to depend on the local uh, law enforcement community. In 2008, in Iraq, a journalist threw not one, but two shoes at President Bush. A storm of controversy erupted as people wondered why the president had not been better protected. Before President Bush was dodging shoes, he had a much closer brush with death. In Tbilisi, Georgia, the Secret Service and Georgian security were overwhelmed by the large crowd. Vladimir Arutunian threw a live Soviet-made RGD-5 hand grenade next to the podium. Fortunately, a red plaid handkerchief wrapped tightly around the grenade kept the firing pin from deploying. The handkerchief had been the only disguise Arutunian had used to hide the weapon. Sometimes the president's fate simply comes down to chance. Nevertheless, every precaution must be taken. When President Bill Clinton traveled to Pakistan in 2000, the Secret Service knew Al-Qaeda had infiltrated the Pakistani military. Clinton went to Pakistan against the advice of the Secret Service. They didn't want him to go. They used decoy airplanes. They actually brought him in on a much smaller version of Air Force One. Then, they had five presidential limousines leave the airport. Only a trusted few knew which contained the American president. I think the best way of looking at the protection of the president is a, is a series of layers. And it starts by destroying organizations before they're able to organize a plot. Then as you get closer to the president in physical proximity, whether it's in the air or vehicle, or then right next to him, you have layers of protection. So the search continues for new technologies, anything to gain an advantage on the potential assassin. And the protection cannot get much closer than the president's clothes. After the assassination attempt, President Reagan wore a bulletproof vest. I have put the vest on the president a few times. It was out of an abundance of caution. I wasn't necessarily concerned that he was in a dangerous situation. Once or twice, Mrs. Reagan actually intervened and asked if he could wear the vest. It is rumored that President Obama was wearing a bulletproof suit during the inauguration. Of course, the Secret Service will say nothing about the matter. But if he was, it almost certainly came from Miguel Caballero, the world's high fashion manufacturer of protective armor. Caballero has taken advantage of the war between drug cartels and the government in his native Colombia to create a new technology of fabric design. El secreto de lograr llegar a que la prenda sea blindada. The secret of what we do is to mix a hybrid of polyester and nylon, which can absorb energy. The basic principle of bulletproofing is absorbing energy. To ensure his employees understand the importance of their work, Caballero personally shoots each one from close range in one of his products. High fashion body armor is big business, and the world's best stores, like Harrods of London, compete to carry Caballero's line. These jackets, suits, and even polo shirts can stop a 357 Magnum, a 9mm, or an Uzi. Tourists actually trek to Caballero's factory, begging to be shot in one of his signature garments. The Secret Service is constantly investigating the range of new protective technology, whether it is Caballero's clothes or LRADs, long-range acoustic devices, that emits sound levels many times higher than any heavy metal concert. They were used by, uh, by a, a luxury ship recently against pirates. They had one of these acoustic devices that just launched a sound wave 
at the pirates that were approaching this ship, and that, that stopped them right there in the water. What 